So today we're going to be talking about spontaneous intracranial hypotension, where the intracranial pressure is low, versus idiopathic intracranial hypertension, where the intracranial pressure is high. And you would think it'd be obvious which one it is, but because it's a pressure-related phenomenon, the symptoms and sometimes the signs overlap between these two conditions. And worse, if you have idiopathic intracranial hypertension, high pressure can erode through the skull base like at the cribriform plate, leading to CSF leak and a CSF rhinorrhea that can produce intracranial hypotension as a result. So the two disorders are connected. And worse, if you treat the SIH by closing the CSF leak, you can end up back where you were with IIH. So as with all of these conditions, symptoms, signs, the radiographic sign, and in this case, CT and MRI, and then the diagnostic test, which is measure the intracranial pressure with a lumbar puncture. So the symptoms overlap because they both have postural headache. Okay. However, in patients who have increased intracranial pressure, when you lie down, the pressure is higher and your headache is worse. When you stand up, gravity pulls the fluid out of your head. And so with intracranial hypotension, SIH, the headache is worse when you stand up. But the key word is postural. If it's postural, it suggests it's a pressure-related problem headache. The second thing is they can have blurred vision. And normally in increased intracranial pressure, that's associated with the sign, which is papilledema. So you have to do a visual field on both SIH and IIH because what we're looking for is a visual field defect. The pressure-related phenomenon, both high and low intracranial pressure and ironically glaucoma, intraocular pressure, spare the central acuity. So you cannot use the central acuity alone in assessing this. You have to do a field. And the patients might have binocular diplopia. And the mechanism for this binocular horizontal diplopia is sixth nerve palsy because the sixth exits the root exit zone in the pons, travels up the clivus in the subarachnoid space, and is anchored again at the Dorello's canal. And so pressure stretches the sixth nerve in the subarachnoid space. So if you have downward herniation of the brain from high pressure or low pressure, that pressure gradient stretches the nerve and produces a sixth nerve palsy. And we call that a non-localizing six nerve palsy because it actually doesn't tell you where the lesion is. It is a non-localizing problem related to increased or decreased intracranial pressure. So the signs are very non-specific um, unless you have a combination of symptom and sign. But the one that matters the most is the papilledema because that's the high pressure sign. The other ones, the sixth, the blurry vision, the headache, those symptoms and signs are for either high or low intracranial pressure. Then you're gonna to go to the radiograph. In the high pressure IIH, we're gonna have fluid, CSF fluid, in the sheath, which is in the optic nerve on T2. So there's fluid in the sheath, flattening of the globe because the fluid is pushing against the back of the eye, empty cella because the pressure is pounding down on the cella, and an MR venogram, in addition to the MRI, has to be performed to look for venous sinus stenosis, as well as making sure it's not venous sinus thrombosis, which would of course not no longer be idiopathic. In SIH, however, where the pressure is low, you have fluid, but not in the sheath. The fluid is a subdural hygroma, or subdural fluid, or subdural hematoma if you break the bridging vein. And so the fluid's not in the sheath, it's subdural. In the cella, it's gonna be a full cella, because the venous engorgement in the pituitary will make it full, so full rather than empty cella. And as opposed to venous sinus stenosis, the fullness in the venous sinuses and in the veins is going to cause pachymeningeal enhancement. So there'll be diffuse pachymeningeal enhancement. So we're going to have enhancement in the spontaneous intracranial hypotension as opposed to the idiopathic intracranial hypertension. And of course, the only way to measure the pressure is to measure it, and that means lumbar puncture. If it's low, you have the diagnosis. If it's high, you also have the diagnosis. But sometimes people have both, so it can be in between or even normal. So you have to combine the symptom, the sign, the radiographic sign, the confirmatory diagnostic test, measure the pressure. And if it's low pressure, you got to look for a CSF leak. If it's high pressure, that can cause the CSF leak and lead to intracranial hypotension. And so the two disorders are related. So you need to be able to compare and contrast the two pressure things that we see in the head, intracranial pressure, too high, SIH uh, and IIH is, uh, are the two com competing hypotheses, high pressure, idiopathic IIH, low pressure, 
idiopathic spontaneous intracranial high potential.